नमस्कार व्यूअर्स हेलो एंड वेलकम टू सनसेट टीवी आई एम टीना झा योर वाचिंग पर्सपेक्टिव इंडिया इज रेडी टू होस्ट द 18th जी ट्वेंटी समिट ऑन द 9th एंड 10th ऑफ सितंबर टू बी हेल्ड एट द न्यूली बिल्ट भारत मंडपम इन प्रगति मैदान द लीडर्स समिट विल मार्क द कल्मिनेशन ऑफ 200 प्लस मीटिंग्स हेल्ड थ्रू आउट द ईयर अक्रॉस 60 इंडियन सिटीज नाउ एट द जी ट्वेंटी लीडर्स समिट डेलीगेट्स एंड लीडर्स फ्रॉम 40 कंट्रीज आर गोइंग टू पार्टिसिपेट these include representatives from member states as well as the invitee countries making it the biggest participation ever in the history of the G20 summit what have been the priorities for india during its G20 presidency what new initiatives has it undertaken and what could be the possible outcomes of the 18th G20 summit all this and much more in perspective today with two distinguished guests joining us on the program i am pleased to welcome on sunset tv dr rajiv nayan senior fellow Manohar Parker Institute for Defence Studies and Analysis and Ambassador Anil Trigonyat his distinguished fellow Vivekanand International Foundation thank you gentlemen for joining me on the program today ambassador to you first as we head into the crucial G20 summit it's time that we quickly revisit what have been the key priorities for india during its G20 presidency that we now hope to translate into tangible outcomes well tina uh... as you know that the biggest priority for india was dictated by the two black swan events one was the pandemic and the other was the russia ukraine war right because during the pandemic we had seen there were at least four major challenges which i call as 4h habitat hunger health and high tech and with the war in in russia ukraine war we are facing the four major challenges again that i call as four f's weaponization of the financial instruments which led to the weaponization of fuel food and fertilizers very often we are only talking about these the other three like the fuel food and fertilizer but not the financial instruments which are having the farthest and the deepest uh, structural issues for the global economy and it is of direct concern because of g20's basic remit has been economy and finance and how to set it up so we have been going through another major uh, financial and economic crisis and we have also seen that the geopolitics has really undermined the geoeconomics in this so there was a very difficult terrain on which india had to tread very carefully so be, by becoming a bridge builder by becoming inclusive having a resilient economic growth uh providing equity environment and economy these have been some of the key if i in my view uh, the issues of course on which india has worked but one of the most important thing is we did realized that where it hurts the most it hurt the most the uh, global south as we call the developing countries whose voice was never heard at least in the g20 which has 85% of the global gdp and all the powerful economies there so india has done is at the early on actually in, in january itself prime minister modi called for this voice of global south and it was done even at a notice of less than 2 weeks uh, during that period and it is it was a remarkable achievement the 125 countries from the global south participated right. and they conveyed uh, their concerns which were then incorporated and the prime minister came out with this mantra of 4 hours and therefore i think that india has been continuing to somehow bridge the gap between various side east west divide the north south divide and being a, a sort of a, a credible uh, interlocutor for everyone in the meantime right. but of course it's not easy because g20 is a consensus based organization and there are still the, G, the geopolitics is still, is still playing out very much uh, but we hope that there will be many things on which uh, india will be able to uh, claim a lot of credit right. prime minister modi of course has two days ago you must have read has said that uh, the 20th century mindset cannot resolve the 21st century problems so therefore people have to come out this is a global issue there is a global challenges that can only be met by global solidarity and if it is not there then we are going to continue to have issues and problems right so of course india's focus dr nayan has been on making the g20 more inclusive 
more people-centric, and for which the Voice of Global South was a commendable initiative that the Indian leadership took. We'll come to that in just a bit, whether what kind of uh, outcome can we expect on this inclusiveness, on, on perhaps the inclusion of the African Union also into the G20 in just a bit. But uh, since we're talking about newer initiatives, Voice of Global South was one such initiative by India. The question to you is, what have been the other initiatives? Throughout the year, we've seen 200 plus meetings taking place in about 60 Indian cities, wherein India took the opportunity to showcase its rich heritage, culture, food, uh, and, and, and a, a diversity to the foreign delegates. But in terms of tangible outcomes, what have been the newer initiatives that have uh, caught the attention of the global leaders, according to you? Look, uh, as Ambassador Trignayat pointed out, there are many issues. There's at around nine priority areas where India is trying to give a new angle, a new shape, and is trying to push some new initiatives. But the Secretariat has listed four new initiatives. Mm -hmm. One is research and innovative initiative gathering, a space economy leaders initiative, G20 empowers, which is relating to women, and G20 chief scientific advisors roundtable. These are four specific concrete uh, initiatives which Indian Secretariat, Indian G20 Secretariat has listed. But it doesn't mean that it is not going to take new initiative in other priority area. In fact, in culture also. In culture also, uh, meetings were held in four cities. And as you rightly pointed out, and uh, Ambassador also pointed out, the focus is to promote inclusiveness. Culture should not divide. Culture should unite the countries, the not only the member countries, other countries which are not part, officially not part of, uh, of uh, this G20's process. Right. But there are many who, which have been invited and, and the attempt is to get them also in, in the process. And they may also contribute to the global problems, global challenges, which have just been mentioned. In culture, we will find that generally once we talk about culture, it's, we generally talk about very exotic and not very concrete. But this time what Prime Minister and our uh, country or our leadership, G20 leadership is trying to do is to just give an economic angle also. G culture industry, culture economy, all these are being pointed out. But it, it doesn't mean that we are forgetting other artifacts, other museum related issues. So all are being brought in and it is also being addressed to the problems which the world is facing, like climate change. How cl culture can also address to, uh, to the problem of climate change. So again, very innovative converse has been taken and we are hoping that the, the world will understand what India's cultural heritage may offer to not only your just ephemeral issues, but also your day-to-day -day living. True. So culture and other issues. Culture and just now it was mentioned that geoeconomics is just being destroyed by geopolitics. So somehow the Indian ethos, the Indian system doesn't separate. It unites. Geoculture should not be seen separately from geoeconomics or geopolitics. So it, it is our heritage. It, it has been our culture, and we never tried to impose our hegemonic intention on any other countries when we went out. We went out to trade, we, we carried our ideas, we took their others' ideas or others' culture also back to our countries, and we just synthesized, synchronized all the traditions and in a very constructive way. So this time, I think we are going to see something very innovative from cultural realm also. Similarly, on education, on education also on anti-corruption, there are many initiatives, many priorities, which are going to see some new ideas coming forward and will be offering to the world these new ideas, which have been hammered in different meetings. Someone just pointed out that uh, this is one president of T7 uh, engagement groups that uh, in Bali, Indonesians and others did not know what G20 is all about. But in India, in just two months, we spread the knowledge of G20. And not only just spread the knowledge, we engaged 
not just through engagement groups, but through other means also. You're right. All, in fact, which, all the countries, in oh, fact, sorry, uh, all the uh, groups. Yeah. Uh, uh, yes, um, so. Ambassador, when, when India uh, assumed G20 presidency last year, many would have assumed it would be a fairly routine affair. But over the past one year, the kind of enthusiasm, the kind of thrust on pertinent global issues that India has put on, it has been anything but routine. The, the question is, how successful have we been in making G20 people-centric, in making it more inclusive? Also, what are, uh, what are the kind of collaborations that we have been able to foster to uh, uh, you know, ensure that the benefits we talk about are meant not just for our domestic population, but for those who, who uh, uh, stand in, in, at, at the end of reaping benefits. For example, the, the underdeveloped world, uh, mainly the countries in the global south that India wants to become a voice of. Well, you are absolutely right, Inaji. The thing is that uh, when India started, the Prime Minister Modi came out with this theme uh, for our G20 presidency, which was Vasudev Kutumkam. One world, one family, and one future. Right. Now, there are certain countries like China, which even have the problem with that world. Now, you can imagine the mentality of these countries. But at the same time, this means it is not only, and it is in our DNA, basically. So we are not even looking at ourselves or our immediate environs. We are looking at the global good, global welfare, and the uh, global commons. So therefore, there we, we need to work. And that is the reason that India has been uh, harping on and persuading the international community to engineer multilateral reforms, reforms of the multilateral institutions, IMF, World Bank, WTO, UN, so which are very important, so that the voices of the uh, global south become far more representative and heard there. So what India took upon itself, the very basic thing that what are the problems? You know, very often one would presume a good paper could be written, what are the issues with the South and what can be incorporated? But we did not take that route. What we did was, Prime Minister said that we need to talk to all the leaders. We need to hear from them. So they heard from them what are their problems, whether it's with regard to health, whether it's with regard to food, fuel, development, uh, developmental paradigms, whether it is about the education or the health that Mr. Nan mentioned just now. So there are all these digital public infrastructure which in which India has excelled tremendously. So in this one, what India has done is, on the one hand, we have tried to take this uh, knowledge dissemination about G20 to Indians per se. Any part or corner of India you go to, you will see the G20 logo. Maybe some people may not know about it, but they get curious. And by big curiosity, they are able to learn about this, its benefits. Secondly, the India was able to display to the world, basically, about what it is all about, the whole India. It is not only Delhi-centric, everything. The things have gone around the India, so there will be much more is there to be offered. And that is something that's very important. It has also created capacities and within the country uh, by doing so. So that has also exposed various other parts of India to these 12,000-odd uh, delegates who visited India so far. Right. And now, during the next few uh, next week, we will be seeing that there will be thousands of journalists who are foreign journalists who have registered in India. Now, you can imagine the kind of media focus that will be there on the country and how India plays it out. And that is something that is going to be very important. So, in my view, we are the issues that we have worked on, the kind of, uh, as, the, as the Prime Minister of say, Jan Bhagadari, so this is something that, this is India per se, total, uh, that is working on it. And the G20 presidency will be remembered for good for many years to come uh, by various countries. And it is not only just the, because we don't talk only in terms of slogans. This is something that is actually being delivered. Secondly, what India has done is at a gigantic scale, everything has been, you know, bigger. Everything is visionary and has been done. And I must uh, compliment, actually, the Prime Minister because he has personally taken a lot of pains to see to it that the minutest details of these things work out well. So the team has done an amazing job because of the leadership. Then at the same time, simultaneously, by participating in various international fora, he has been able to communicate our priorities, G20 priorities, because they are not only the priorities for India, they are the global priorities. And that's why they wanted that there should be a consensus on the global key issues, whether it is finance related, whether it is tourism related, whether it is food related, or any other matter. There's so many things today. Women-led development. It was not merely women empowerment. 
So there is a, a, a nuanced change, which is very significant right. in each of the things that India has taken up. New groups have been uh, created, new engagement uh, groups, as they call it, working groups. So they have been created, whether it is for disaster resilience, whether it is for innovation startups, or for the women-led development. So there are plenty of things that we also expect that various treaties and others that have been worked out, be it in the international taxation domain, uh, we are seeing that a lot of taxes being evaded and people are sitting in UK and elsewhere and nothing is being done to repatriate them. So those are the things that India wants to bring out. Mr. Nayan also mentioned about corruption, anti-corruption. Prime Minister for last black money and anti-corruption, he has been talking about for, since for last five presidencies. So this one is the time that when we need to work upon some kind of a uh, an outcome uh, which could figure there very prominently. You're right, and that, that's something that India has done remarkably well, that despite the geopolitical crisis still existing, we've been able to keep the focus of the G20 on other pertinent issues, and, and there have been so many working group meetings through the year over the last nine to ten months. But uh, Dr. Nayan, all eyes will now be on the global leadership declaration at the end of, of the summit, at the conclusion of the summit. And for this, what we will, of course, be awaiting is that the trust, the priorities that India has set will translate into outcomes. The, the biggest of them will be inclusiveness, as we've uh, spoken about. How welcoming are the G20 member states about the idea of including the African Union into the G20, making it the G21? And are you hopeful that this is uh, one, one step in the right direction? Because, of course, G20 is driven by consensus. Will that be something that we will see at the end of the New Delhi summit? I'll start from the last point about African Union's inclusion in the, in the, in the grouping and calling it G21. Right. I am hopeful. I am hopeful. Why I am hopeful? Because no one will oppose it. And the trust, the focus, or you can say emphasis has been on Global South. And all are trying, we, are, we have been talking about geopolitics, even if we know that G20 was created to bridge the gaps, as Ambassador has rightly pointed out, many divides, and many divides were, were tried to be bridged. Of course, it has surfaced again uh, because of uh, the crisis, the well-known crisis, which is happening in Europe and between Russia and Ukraine, and Ukraine is being backed by the Western countries. So this is there is still, Still, we are hopeful that they all will understand and all the groupings. No one will be, once India proposes, I don't think anyone will be coming to oppose the entry of African Union. One country or another country uh, could be opposed because of their tilt or their loyalty. But Africa Union per se, I think should not have any problem it is being pushed. Okay. But you never know in geopolitics what will happen, what may happen. But this is... No, I, I, this is my sense. This is what my sense is. Now coming to other points, inclusiveness. In fact, inclusiveness will help us help and help the G20 G20 leadership, which uh, the country has demonstrated so far. And they are now outcome doc document. Even in Bali, India was just on the troika. It was welcoming its leadership, but it played a very important role in somehow convincing the major actors which we are confronting. And India was appreciated by, if you read the newspapers, all I mean Western newspapers and other newspapers, all appreciated India's role in Bali in and bringing out its outcome doc document. So once India did it last time, this time again, of course, we all know there are problems and this because of these problems, many ministerial uh, declarations or documents were uh, not, uh, could not see the light of the day, yet we should be hopeful because all the meetings which we organized over the year, you can say, or over 10 months, we tried to bring different stakeholders from all the countries which are going to participate in this process, summit process. And they contributed and they participated very actively in different engagement groups, different SERPA groups, financial tracks, in all the meetings, I will find and they have they were coming out and supporting and expressing uh, hope for this G20 meeting because they know this is this is a wonderful grouping which has got all the major groupings, rising power plus risen powers, G uh, European Union, European uh, America, United States, China, and if if this grouping fails, then the United Nations 
has already got problems and many many the many of the global challenges which were we discussed in the last segment will face will become aggravated will and that will become more more problematic in the future so i think in it is in the best interest of the world and the best interest for the countries which are participating to see that a document and an understanding is raised and india is trying to reach out to all the countries it is not only just uh, global south because yes the, of course we uh, this the, the global south was the focus but we interacted with western countries within we have been maintaining good channel of communication with even russia china we, we never did it whatever chinese uh, chinese president is not coming it is his choice so india played a very positive role and i think with uh, we are just hoping that something positive should come out okay, okay. and many of Ambassador, the challenges the 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 presidents of uh, russia and china will be conspicuous by their absence at this crucial g20 summit for india uh, so far we've managed to steer through the challenges keeping the focus on multiple other issues pertaining to the developing world and getting more representation for these underrepresented countries but what are the challenges that still lie especially because we keep coming back to the point that g20 is driven by consensus without consensus there will be no tangible outcome the geopolitical crisis still exists the political divides are still very much there so what are the kind of challenges that india still has to undergo or has to face in the next few days to make its g20 presidency successful you know currently the 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 sherpa final sherpa meeting is going on which will be deciding on the declaration uh, itself till on the 7th by 7th it will be over right so uh, this would possibly uh, be there but if you go by the past the biggest challenge has been the uh, politicization of this whole thing that the two camps have very diverse views uh, on russia ukraine war and how this to be treated while one says that there is no place for a reference to the russia ukraine war conflict in the economic uh, model that uh, g20 represents uh, on the other hand the others say that g20 this war has impacted greatly everybody else so therefore it very much be that they of course driven by geopolitics and not necessarily by the morality of it so that is a very major challenge for india that remains alive and kicking till today you mentioned about uh, president xi jinping and president putin not coming as you know president putin did speak to prime minister modi and explain to him why he was not coming yeah. so i would say that russia was not on the opposing mode even though the uh, foreign minister lavrov two days ago said uh, in one of the interviews that uh, if uh, their point of view is not reflected in the declaration there will be no declaration hopefully they will not come to pass uh, on that issue but there will be a an adjustment because this was india which had worked out uh, an impasse uh, on this particular issue at bali also so that would be one of the major issues but at the same time if you were to see as dr jayashankar has often mentioned uh, that uh, 90 to 95% issues global issues that are of concern for everyone there has been a consensus so unfortunate part is that Uh, the semantics of it are what just going to be uh, become a media headline and not what exactly is agreed to such of the great major things uh, that will be agreed to during the documentations now uh, that is something very important so i hope that irrespective of the fact and, and let's also not say i mean i personally feel that whether president she come does not come a deputy says prime minister or his foreign minister should not make any difference china has a position it is our adversarial position across the world and we are going to have this challenge counter this challenge all through and everywhere whether through competition cooperation or conflict whatever is the case so that is the time will decide and the course of action that they take so we will not be uh, we will not we cannot become uh, reticent about these things right let, let's let's time, just hope that uh, you know uh, india's initiatives and india's efforts uh, in making the g20 more inclusive more representative have been remarkable uh, through the past one year whatever the g20 outcomes are let's be hopeful that they are fair balanced and acceptable to all that is something which will be of utmost importance for all the member states as well as those who want to be part of the g20
That having been said, I'll have to wind up the program. Time allows me to take up only that much on uh, this edition of Perspective. Thank you once again to both my guests for joining me on this edition of the program and sharing your thoughts with us and our viewers. And to you viewers, thank you very much for your time as well. Take good care.